Welcome to Facebook. I'm Dr. Mary Neal. Thank you for joining me today. Praise the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Father, I come before you in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, I bless your holy name. I give you praise. I give you honor and glory. Father, I thank you for all that you have done and all that you're going to do. God, I ask you to move by your spirit today in a mighty way. Father, I ask you to bless each and every one that come today or come later, O oh God, in the name of Yeshua. Father, move into every congregation today. Let a word rightly be spoken today, O oh God, that will encourage, will build up. Father, that will deliver and make free. Father, that people will come to you through Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I bless your holy name, and I thank you for all that you have done in my life and all that you continue to do. Continue to bless people this weekend as they travel, oh God, for this holiday. Give them traveling grace, oh God, in the name of Yeshua. Lessen, lessen the headache that they are going through trying to travel, oh God, in the name of Yeshua. God, I ask you to continue to bless this country. Bless every nation, oh God. Bless a special blessing upon Ukraine, God. Help them to win this battle, oh God, in the name of Yeshua, that their people, their homeland will not continue to be destroyed by evil, Lord. Fight this battle for them, Father, in the name of Yeshua, because we know you can do what no other can do. Father, if anyone is sick among us, God, we ask you to raise them out of their sick bed in the name of Yeshua, because we know he went about just healing all that was sick and all that was oppressed with the, by the adversary, because, Father, you was with him. He was never alone. So, God, I thank you that I'm a never, I am never alone because you are with me. Your dear son is with me in the rush. Karkosh Holy Ghost is with me. So, God, sanctify today that you would be glorified. Oh, God, in the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you once again. I wanted to try. It's just no one is on here right now. I wanted to try one of my songs here on my iPad. Let's see. I just thought about that a little while ago. And I was actually in something all together. Let's see. I think I have one on here. A couple. In the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. At least I thought I had some on here. Wow. try this one see if it play now I'm on Facebook so hopefully this will play sorry that the battery and my guitar are making a lot of noise
choice a long time ago to teach like Yeshua. If no one receive it, I still will teach it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That's the way we are to be. Teach like Yeshua. Teach like those disciples. And some people will receive it, but some people will not. Why? Because they did not, not all receive Yeshua's teaching nor did they receive the disciples' teaching. That's why Yeshua said, if they receive my words, they will receive your words. But if they do not receive my words, they are not going to receive your words. So the only thing we can do or should do is live it, teach it, and be good examples. Can you agree? Hallelujah. Some of the things we'll go through, and I'm going to expound on them because I do not have certain things down further. Are we hungry? I remember putting that out uh, during the class. I think it was last year. Are we hungry? Why should we say are we hungry? Because we know if we're hungry for food, we will eat it. Even sometimes we do not even like it. But if we're really hungry, we'll go ahead and eat it. Well, when you're hungry for God's word, if you like it or not, you're to go ahead and eat it. Because God's word is good. God's word is sent forth to bless us, to heal us, to deliver us, to sanctify us, to justify us that we could be glorified. Hallelujah. First of all, just in case we have anyone out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, that the family of Yahweh, the father of Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can only be justified according to the word of God as far as being adopted out of Egypt, which represent the world, into the family of God. You must be justified by your faith. The same way Abraham was justified. That's why the Bible says how God justify the ungodly. And sometimes we do not uh, focus on that word ungodly. You see that word ungodly many times in the Bible. Like Psalm chapter 1, you see the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So ungodly people, those who do not have God. If we do not have Yeshua, we do not have God. If we have Yeshua, we have both the Father and the Son according to the Word of God. Now, I'm going to say something today. Probably someone will not agree. That's okay. You're not to agree with me. You are to agree with the Word of God. The problem we are having today, we are agreeing with man, but we are not agreeing with the word of God many times. So you only justify by your faith 
That means you do no work, you believe on God, and you believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, and that's what get us adopted out of the world into the family of God. So we're entering a race. Once we're in the race, we are to run the race. You can't run a race unless you get in the race. So once you're in the race, that's when many things are required by God of us. The Bible says we are to confess with our mouth. That's why it says, if those disciples say, so have we believe, so have we spoken. So in order for me to speak something, I need to believe it. So it says, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 through 10, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, meaning his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, because this is what is being tried, our hearts. And so said, out of the heart, Man believeth, in other words, man continue to believe unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13 are for those of us who are in Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's why it said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, we know or should know we can't call on who we do not know. So in order to call upon the name of the Lord, we need to get to know the Lord and to get to know the name. And so we know the name, there's power in the name. That's why I said, whosoever shall call upon the name shall be saved, the name of the Lord. And then you go to First John, uh, Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, that continuation, he that believeth and is what? baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be what? Shall be damned. And then 1 John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13 says, he that confesses and forsake his sin, meaning repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sins, will not prosper. Many times people wondering why they are not going forward. Well, that's that key right there. He that confesses and forsakes not his sin, in other words, he that own up and do not re, uh, repent from his sin will not prosper. That means you can't go forward. Why? Because in order to be forgiven of sin, we must be in Yeshua the Messiah and then we need to acknowledge our sins. As David says, I acknowledge my transgression. My sin is always before me. Well, what is the difference there? It's when we rightly divide the word of truth. Because our sins are not before us. If we agree with God, confess. That's what it is to agree with God. Same way, confess his word. Agree with his word. So when we confess our sin and we repent, turn away from them, the blood of Yeshua, the blood of Christ, washes them away. So they are no longer before me. They are not behind me. They are definitely not covered. They are not on the side of me. They are what? They are washed away. So that's why we have the if and the but. That means if we do it. If we do not, nothing is going to happen, people. You cannot be forgiven of your sin by saying, I'm sorry. There's nothing in the scripture that says, say, I'm sorry, and I'll forgive you of your sin. What it does say, godly sorrow work is repentant. That means we are really to have, we are really to ha uh, be sorrowful when we go against God's word. And if we really are sorrowful when we go against God's word, that will bring forth repentance. But sometimes we, are, we may be sorry for a few minutes, sorry for a day, sorry for a week, you said, what are you saying? Well, remember how many times people go out and do something. They say, I am so sorry. I promise I'll never do it again. And turn right around and do the same 
thing again. That's not godly sorrowful. So we are really to be sorrowful when we go against God. Then we will be sorrowful when we go against man. If we are not sorrowful when we go against God, we can say it, but that doesn't mean we are really sorrowful for our sin. Hallelujah. That was the Holy Ghost. Didn't know I was going there. So some of the things we'll cover again as we go forward. Are we hungry? I am always hungry. For food, uh, not always hungry. But when it comes to God's word, because God's word is food. That's why they have these little booklets called Daily Bread. That's the word of God. Why? Because man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out from the mouth of God. It didn't say every word that someone went out there and just did when it was not required of them, but every word that preceded what God spoke out of his mouth, what God wrote with his fingers. That's why you can find that information in Deuteronomy chapter 8, Matthew chapter number 4, and Luke chapter number 4, I'm thinking, I'm almost sure, in those two books. Man shall not. This is Yeshua. When Satan came after him, he always used the word of God. What does that teach us? When Satan come after us, we are to use the word of God. So when we use the word of God, this is how what? This is how we can uh, not fall into temptation. Uh, that's why the Bible says, lead us not into temptation. So because temptation is going to come, God will make a way for us to what? For us to escape, which means the door is open. You're free to take the way out or you're free to stay exactly where you are because God gives everyone freedom of choices. And that's why he says, the Bible says in the book of Acts, <coughs> I'm not looking at the verse, God has no respect of person, but we miss something <coughs> to them. <coughs> that fear him. Excuse me, I rebuke that cough in your sure's name. Allergy season, but I will do not, I will say today, I will not do allergies and allergies will not do me. Hallelujah. So again, <clears throat> let the gift of God explain the gifts, plural. The Rosh HaKosh, Holy Ghost, and Yahshua, Yahshua, Jesus. The promise gift, the Rosh HaKosh, Holy Ghost, teaches, reveals, manifests, and testifies. All now the Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me. This prophet is Yahshua, Yahshua, Jesus. Like me, like Moses. Remember what I said, when I do, and I still left a lot of information out there on my Facebook. I put a lot of information out there on uh, this video as well, because people need to study certain things just in case they have been, been enlightened by certain things. So it says, Adonai, that means the Lord God. I use blue. Because I'm separating words, as we said uh, in our last few videos. The problem is today, like revealing my spirit, when we study the word of God, we're not separating the word of God. We are not dividing the word of truth. So here, where it says, I don't know the Lord God will. I use blue because I know it's speaking of God the Father. Raise up. I know it means Yeshua, the Messiah. Raise up for you, for his people, a prophet. That's Yeshua, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. So I use red. Like me. Other words, like Moses. Again, this prophet is the Son of God. That's who it is. Yeshua, Yeshua, Jesus. Like me, that means Moses. So a prophet like Moses, but not Moses. And so many times a person may read that and they do not realize, take time and focus 
that who is this prophet God going to raise up like Moses? Not as Moses, but like Moses. You know how someone can say, you look just like. In other words, those two people are not the same. You're saying someone look like you. As the twins, they are not the same, but they look like each other, but they too individual. And so here, many times when we study the word of God, are we really rightly dividing the word of truth? So again, a prophet like me, like Moses, but not Moses. The other word, Moses was not Yeshua, and Yeshua was not Moses. Hallelujah. John 14 and verse 16. John 14, verse 16. Uh, what did I want to do there? I have two different things going here. I need to go up. John 14, 16. Let me do this so I don't have to Let's see if I can do it that way. Okay. John 14, 16, reading from Complete Jewish Bible. Is anybody with me today? And I will ask, I have read, who gonna ask? And I will ask. So this is Yahshua read. He's going to ask someone. He's not going to ask himself, himself, right, Sheila? And I will ask the Father, blue. And he will give blue. That means God, Yahshua going to ask his Father. And his Father going to give you another comforting counselor like me. Again, we saw like Moses... Here we say, see, like me, the spirit of truth, to be with you forever. Well, right there, we know the same way like Moses, but not Moses. Yeshua was going to be a prophet like Moses, but he's not Moses. So here we see comforting counselor like me, but the comforting counselor is not him. And many people think they are the same because they are not rightly dividing words or dividing the word of truth. So what I do, because sometimes when people hear something like this, they may just cut me off and say, what is she saying? They are not the same. They are the same. I beg you to differ. I'll prove they are not the same. But we are say they are, but we can't prove they are. No, because Yeshua said his father going to send another that means something different. Another counseling comforter like me. In other words, this comforter counseling is going to be like him, but not him. Well, how do we know? Well, let's go to Matthew chapter uh, 12, 31 through 32. Complete Jewish Bible. Uh, Mark 12, I'm sorry, Matthew 12, 31 and 32. Because of this, this is Yahshua teaching. I tell you that people will be forgiven any sin and blaspheme. But, so right there it changes something. Because he said people will be forgiven any sin and blaspheme. Well, if I stop there, I'll think all sin will be forgiven me when I confess and repent. No. Listen to what he said. I tell you that people will be forgiven any sin and blaspheme. But blaspheming the rush harkosh, which is the Holy Ghost, will not be forgiven. Well, as we go forward, we're going to see, he said, you can say something about me and I will forgive you. But if you blaspheme the Rosh HaKosh, you have never forgiveness. Why? Because the Rosh HaKosh came to testify of me. He's going to take of mine and he's going to show it to you. So if you keep blaspheming the Rosh HaKosh, you would never be forgiven. That is a sin unto death. Uh, verse 32, same chapter, Matthew chapter 12, uh, chapter 12. Now, if we continue, if we just stopped at that first verse, we could miss it because we didn't continue to read. So now I'm going to read 32. One can say anything against the Son. See, right there. Yahshua said, one can say anything against me. Watch right this. One can say anything against the Son, read, that's Yahshua, Yahshua, Jesus. Of men, 
Yeshua is the son of man. The son of God is not speaking of the son of Joseph. That's why if you look at different translation, it's going to have it capitalized because it means the son of God when you see son of man many times. You will see son of Joseph, but when it comes to God, son of man, son of God. Read the whole verse. And one can say anything against the son of man and be forgiven. See, you can say something about Yeshua and he'll forgive you. But whoever keeps on speaking against the Rosh Hakosh, which is the Holy Ghost, will never be forgiven, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. How can anyone say they are the same? No, because he just told you. I'll forgive you if you say something against me, but if you blaspheme the Rush Harkos, that spirit, that uh, spirit that going to keep going out from the Father and going, God going to send it to me, and then he show us where he's going to send it as well. So we covered that verse last week. We are come across it again, I'm thinking. Uh, now you go to Mark 3, 28, 29. That's Mark 3, 28, 29. Yes, I tell, again, that's Yeshua talking or teaching. Yes, I tell you that people will be forgiven all sin and whatever blaspheme they alter. But if we do not go to twenty uh, to verse 29, again, we will what? We will miss it. However, someone who blasphemes against the Rosh HaKosh Holy Ghost never have forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin. That proves, people, if we will receive truth, they can't be the same. They never said they were the same. But many people think all three, God the Father, Yeshua the Messiah, and the Rosh Hakko are the same. No, they're not. They have different functions, different jobs, different things they do. John 14, 16, complete Jewish Bible. And I will ask that Yeshua Jesus again going to ask who? He's not going to ask himself. And I will ask the Father and he will give. In other words, I'm going to ask my Father and my Father going to give you at another comforting counsel like me, but he is not me. The Spirit of truth to be with you forever. Now, I don't think I'm coming back across that information, so I had to explain it. Now we'll come back come back across these particular uh, particular statement. Wait, but what the Father promised, which you heard about from me. I'll read it again. Wait, some of us are still in waiting, but we stop looking. Wait for what the Father promised. God the Father promised. Blue. And light blue, I used the Rush Harkos. Which you heard about. Other words, you heard about this promise from me. Because Yeshua spoke about the promise from God that the Rush Harkos from the Father was going to send will keep coming out from the Father. Wait, again, many times we're in waiting. Wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised, blue, because God is the one that raised, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, even Yeshua, which delivers us from the wrath to come. Other words, it's Yeshua, the Messiah, that deliver us from the wrath of God. Other words, when we are living in sin, we are under the wrath of God. Other words, if I die in sin, I'm under the wrath of God. As I said before, and the Holy Ghost tell me to say something, I'm going to say it. Many times, people do not try to help people when they are alive. They wait until they are deceased, and then they say, uh, uh, this person have their heavenly wing. I was reading something today, uh, the other day, same thing, uh, heavenly wings. 
people, if you're not in Yeshua, if you do not die in Yeshua, somebody's lying to you if they say you're going to heaven and live forever. That is a lie from the pits of hell. And I'm not afraid to say it because the Lord told me to snatch as many people out of the hand of Satan as possible. People are not living for God. Do nothing for God. Not in the Son of God. And people are saying they have their heavenly wings and they are in heaven. I don't know where you all people are getting that stuff from. Well, yes, I do. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They're getting it from a lying spirit. That's what they're getting it from. And so you're going to do nothing to help people get into heaven and let them know it's not enough to get in a race. But if you faint while you're in the race, you'll never make it. In other words, if you get up, if, uh, if you give up, if you sit down, if you go back, if you go in back into the world, start doing the same thing you used to do, and you die that way, and some lying spirit will tell you you're okay, you're listening to a lying spirit. And Yahshua came to teach us truth so we can be delivered from lying spirit. Because what's happening today, many people are living a lie and they do not realize it. And because they keep rejecting the truth, God is allowing them to continue to believe a lie. That's scripture. If you actually look at it, when you do not want to believe the truth, God will send a lying spirit. So many times people rather receive a lying spirit than receive the truth. A lying spirit will cause you not to repent. Truth will help you to repent. Amen. Hallelujah. So again, wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised, whom God raised from the dead, even Jesus. In other words, even Yeshua, which delivers us from the wrath to come. Wait for his son, Yeshua, whom he raised from the dead. You kill the offer of life because Yeshua is the one that gives life. That means he is the offer of life. But God has raised him. Other words, now I'm going to uh, I'm going to go back through it in red and blue. You kill the people did the offer of life. Red, Yeshua the Messiah. This is what rightly dividing words. But God, blue, has raised blue, him, Yeshua the Messiah, from the dead. So the time of refreshing, I'm going back to these scriptures, I promise you. I'm just making this statement right now. So that time, so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord present. That's God. And he may send, who's going to send? God, blue. The Messiah, red. The Messiah Christ appointed in advance. Other words, Yeshua was appointed from the foundation of the world. That's why I said God is going to send, but he must wait in heaven. Because if a person does not believe that he is the son of God, they are not justified by their faith. So he's still waiting in heaven for them to believe so he can come from heaven into their heart. Speaking of spirit, not bodies. Hallelujah. Promises. We say all of God promises of what? Yes. As we say, King James, yea, and amen. So promises, we're going to look at some of those. But this is how, this is how God fulfilled what he has promised. Blue. Because speaking of God the Father. But this is how God fulfilled what he had promised, what he had, let me go back. But this is how God fulfilled what he had announced in advance. In other words, he had announced it in advance, but then it had to be fulfilled. When he spoke, who spoke? God. How did God speak? When he spoke through all the prophets. See, God spoke through the prophets. He spoke through Yeshua. He speaks through us. 
because no one have ever really heard, no one have ever heard God's voice. That's why when you go to uh, certain scripture, it would say a voice from heaven. Because why? Because if they heard his voice, Yeshua says, no one have ever heard my father's voice at any time, nor seen his shape. So God spoke. Think of spirit. He spoke through a spirit. But this is how God fulfilled what he had announced in advance when he spoke through all the prophets. Namely, that his Messiah, that means that God, Messiah, Christ, was to die. So God spoke this in advance. But many people did not believe what the word of God spoke. As God spoke in advance, he spoke through the prophet. That's why Hebrews says, but in the last days, God has spoke to us through his son. Yahshua speak to us through his spirit. You know, you can hear a voice speaking to you. Well, that is the spirit. It doesn't mean it's a person standing right beside you when you hear a voice. Other words, I can hear a voice and not see the person. But it's not good enough to just hear a voice we are to be able to see. That's why David said, not David, but uh, Job, I heard of thee by the ear, but now my eyes see thee. So many of us are just hearing because faith come by hearing and hearing, but many of us cannot see. We're to be able to see in the spirit. Hallelujah. But this is how God fulfilled what he had announced in advance. When he spoke through all the prophets, namely that his Messiah Christ was to die. Well, remember, Yahshua is a prophet. And that's why Moses said, God is going to raise up a prophet like me. Because Yahshua is a prophet prophet but many people they say the uh great prophet or this prophet was moses and so forth many times people was prophets but you may not see it until you get to a certain scripture like david was a prophet many people was prophets in the bible that's why i say he spoke through all the prophets david prophesied Many people thought David was speaking of himself many times, but when we study the chapter, we'll notice he was not. He was speaking of Yeshua, that come to think of it, that's what took us from Acts chapter 2 into Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 2, 39, I'm reading. For the promise, because there are many promises, that's why all God promises are yes and amen. As King James say, yea and amen. So Acts 2.39, complete Jewish Bible. For the promise is for you. This is the verse we actually stopped off on yesterday. I'm thinking, uh, not yesterday, but uh, Monday night. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for those far away. So note it, it's for you, it's for your children, and for those far away. Far away, far away. As many as other not our God may call. Other words, some people are in Yeshua, and that promise is for God. Uh, that promise is for them from God, but they have not received that promise because they are far away. We know we get so far away, we can't not hear. We are to get closer, so we what can hear. That's why I say, as many as other not our God may call. Well, remember, we are called, then we are chosen, and then we are to be what? Faithful. That's why the Bible says all are not faithful. No, because I'm called, because I'm saved, as we say, because I'm in the family of God, as we say. Does that mean I'm, I'm faithful? Absolutely not. So it's not enough to just be called and chosen, but not faithful. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 9. People doesn't like this kind of teaching many times. I know that. You know why? People don't like the truth. That's why. Many times people want to use just a feel-good message. Just the Bible says, 
the tickling of the ears. You know, tell me something <clears throat> that make my flesh feel good. Tell me something <clears throat> to keep me where I am. But don't tell me what is required of me. It is required <coughs> in stewardship that we be found faithful. Uh, 2 Peter 3, 9, complete Jewish Bible. Actually, that statement brings us right into this verse. <coughs> the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Now, sometimes we say, well, the Lord promised me a new house. And he sure is slow with his promise. But then we read the whole verse. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some people think of slowness, on the contrary, he is patient. Yes, he is. He was patient with Jezebel, but she repented not. He was patient with Job, but Job went through a lot. He is patient with you, for it is not his purpose. See, it's not God's purpose. It's not Yeshua's purpose. For it is not his purpose that anyone should be destroyed. And we have a nerve enough to say, like, God is playing favoritism. Like some people are going to be destroyed because that was God's will. The Bible says God's will is for all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So let me finish this verse. He is patient with you. Yes, he is. Praise God. For it is not his purpose that anyone should be destroyed. Other anyone it is not his purpose that anyone go to hell. It's not his purpose that anyone should be destroyed, but that everyone should turn from his sin. That is his purpose. That no one go to hell, but everyone would turn from their sin. In other words, King James says should come to repentance. Well, we know repentance means to what? Turn. Act 2.34 I know Acts 2.39. Acts 2.39. Uh, why you're not going up on me? Acts 2.39. <clears throat> for the promise again is for you, for your children, for those far away, as men if art or not, God may call. Acts 1.4. At one of the gathering, he instructed Yeshua, them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait. Wait for what the Father promised. Notice that, not what he promised. I'll read it again. At one of these gatherings, he instructed that the Son of God, Yeshua the Messiah, them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for what the Father promised, which you heard again about from me. He's speaking of the promise, the rush harkos that God was going to send and they heard him speak about it. Luke 24 20 Luke 24 49 Complete Jewish Bible. Everything I'm reading the Complete Jewish Bible. If I use a different translation, I'll let you know. Uh, John 15 26. When the council will come whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who keeps going out from the Father. He will testify on my behalf. So we went through this verse again, but it goes right back to references to what we are teaching. So again, we read it before how God was going to send that promise, and that promise of the Rosh HaGosh we're going to teach then Yahshua was going to send it from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who keep going out from the Father and tell us what it's going to do. He will, the Rosh HaKosh, Holy Ghost, because that's the counseling comforter, he will testify on my behalf. As King James said, he will testify of me. John 14, 26. But the counselor, the Rosh HaKosh, whom the Father was sending in my name, will teach. There it is. 
you everything that is he will remind you of everything i have said to you that's why we need to rush harko's holy ghost to teach because they all again shall be taught of god and to remind us of what yeshua said but if we do not know what he said how can the rush harkos reminds us of what he said a good example say someone did something to you and you said i'm never going to forgive them but if we have the rush harkos the spirit will rise up and remind us of what yeshua said if you do not forgive every one of your brothers of their trespasses, neither will my heavenly father, neither will your heavenly father forgive you. So that's why we need the rush heart coach to remind us. That's why he said he will remind you of everything I have said to you. So many times if someone is teaching and they say in something different than what the word of God teaches, the spirit of God reminds me of what Yeshua have said to me. And the same thing should happen to you. If I'm teaching and the spirit in you remind you of something that uh, Yeshua did not say, then you need to go back and check it out. Or I need to go back and check it out because maybe he said it one way in one place and then he went to another place. He's speaking about something different, but he did say something that he didn't say in Matthew chapter 1. You may see something different in Luke chapter number 1. See what I'm saying? Because everything is not uh, line on line, precept on precept when it comes to the studying of God's word. That's why we are to search out God's word because someone said, well, that is not what he said. Well, maybe that's not what he said in that chapter, but in another chapter, he's talking about something different and he said something completely different. I love to use the example of, of Judas where uh, Judas betrayed Yeshua. We know uh, he he betrayed Yeshua, hand him over to the enemy, as we could say. Well, we know uh, Judas had indignation about the expensive oil. He was speaking of, we could have sold this oil for so much. Well, that's in one book or one chapter. Well, we need to go back and study because he also had indignation against all the disciples. The, all of the disciples said the same thing. That oil was so expensive that they should have sold it and gave it to the poor. So when you study, you see different things are happening at different times. And so many times people say, well, that's not what he said. Because that's why you see one time a different Mary anointed his feet. Mary Magdalene anointed his head with that oil. So that's why it's so important to search out the word of God because we're just not going to get everything in one chapter, one book, and one verse. Hallelujah. Like John 3.16, another one. Many people re uh, misquote it in the way they misquote it. If they continue to read the chapter, they can see it is not what they misquoted. Hallelujah. Again, uh, John 15, 26. When the council will come, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who keep going out from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. John 14, 26. But the council of the Rush Harkos, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything. That is, he will remind you of everything I have said to you. Acts 2, 33. Moreover, he has been exalted. In other words, read. Yeshua had been exalted to where? To the right hand of God. Has received. So Yeshua received. The same way I went through that scripture, I think it was Monday night, where Yeshua said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And then we look at the scripture, uh, how they rejected the Rosh Hakos, the Father, showing you again, it was all the way back there, but they kept 
rejecting it. Same way the Holy Ghost is coming to reveal things to us, but we keep rejecting it. This is not what I heard. This is not what I've been taught all my life, and we just keep rejecting it. Remember, Paul said, you do reject the rush hardcore. Your blood be on your own head, because when we reject it, we are in sin, because we are blaspheming the rush hardcore. Uh, Acts 2.33. Moreover, he has been exalted to the right hand of God, has received. See, Yeshua received that promise as well as the promise was for them, for their children, and those far away. So Yeshua received it. Says, moreover, he has been exalted to the right hand of God, has received. In other words, Yeshua, the Son of God, received from the Father. As we receive from Yeshua. It said, receive from the Father what he had promised, namely, the Rosh Hakosh, which is the Holy Ghost, and has poured out this gift, because it's a gift, as we said before, which you are both seeing and hearing. So Acts uh, 3, 15, 26, you killed the author of life. John 14, 6, AMP. Jesus said to him, read, Jesus said, I am the only way. Yeshua said these words. I'm the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Remember John 15, 1, complete Jewish Bible. I am the real vine, which means true vine. And my father is the gardener. And I say to people, just in case if you never study that chapter and sketched it out, do so. It's so powerful, especially if you're teaching someone else about once you're saved, once you're in Christ, you can never go to hell. Perfect chapter to rebuke that. Because if you draw a tree, and you do everything, just draw yourself a tree, make a head on top of the tree, just like a real tree. That head is God the Father. Draw your vine coming down from that head. That vine is Yeshua. Draw you branches, people. And then you study that chapter and just keep just doing whatever that scripture, uh, scripture said. Uh, God purchased those who produce fruit that they would produce what? More fruit. So you put a lot of fruits on the vine. But if a vine is not producing a person, that person is cut off and they would be burned in hell. That is a perfect chapter to go against lion spirit because you are in Yeshua the Messiah. You can't miss it. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You can't take anyone out of the kingdom if they are not in the kingdom. Why do we want to teach that way? Because if a person really want to know the truth, they will change. But if they want to believe a lie so they can stay the way they are, they will continue the way they are and miss heaven and enter into hell because God sent forth truth to deliver. He sent forth truth to bless. Satan so tears, lies, deception because he does not want us to end up in heaven. Misery loves company. Hallelujah. Acts again, uh, Acts 3 15. I didn't read that. Acts 3 15. You kill the author of life. Again, Yeshua's the author. But God has raised blue. Him from the dead, red. Of this we are witnesses. What are we to witness to? When the Holy Ghost comes, he's going to witness of me. That's what he's going to do. Listen what they said. You kill the author of life, but God has raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. But what are we witnessing to, people? We are witnessing to things that causes people to stumble. We are witness to things that can snatch, not snatching them out of Satan's hand, but helping Satan to snatch them back. 
other words, they are backsliding. They are going away from their faith because they do not understand their faith is going to be tried to see how genuine, how real their faith really are. I am interpreting this. First, let me read this. I am the real vine, the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Acts. You kill the author of life, but God has raised him from the dead of this we're witness. So now I'm going to interpret it. They killed the author of life, Yahshua, Yahshua, Jesus. But God, his father, and his God raised him from the dead, Act 3.16. And it is through putting trust in his name that his name has given strength. Other words, when we put trust, remember trust, you trust in, you trust in God, you believe in God, believe also in me. So when we trust in Yeshua, yeah, see people could be in him and doesn't trust in him. Uh, you know, we could say, I have Jesus in me, but I don't, I can't trust. I don't believe he can heal me. I have Jesus in me, but I don't trust. I don't believe he want to bless me. I have Jesus in me, but I don't trust. I don't believe he want me hungry. It kind of reminds me, uh, I don't think I mentioned it Monday night. I was at this place where I would go get my peanuts. And this guy from a different race, we have conversation many times. So when I go in, he started, you know, teaching, uh, not teaching, talking about something on one side of politics and so forth. So the Spirit of God just took over me again. I said, number one, the problem is that people are trusting in themselves or trusting in man. They are not trusting in God. I believe the word of God. I never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg for bread. And I said, that's the problem. People are not living for God many times. Because, yeah, people have a hard time sometimes, but they shouldn't have a hard time all the time. A good example, if a person does not work, he should not eat. So if a person is healthy and they can work, there's no problem with them getting a job. So I hear there are three jobs for every person that wants a job. And I know many times people just do not want to do better. They are lazy. I know that. And I uh, ran a ministry. The ministry is still there in Waco, Texas. We would feed the hungry every Saturday, every Sunday. And that was a guy told me that I asked him, why a nice looking guy walk around clean, end up in jail, on drugs, do okay for a while. And one day he looked like, he seemed like he was doing pretty well. And he says to me, I said, why don't you get a job? He said, why should I get a job? Uh, like, because I can eat free. I'm in a place, I guess he was living free. I said, why should you get a job? I said, so you can help other people so you're not depending on other people to help you. Now, this guy's coming to our church, eating, taking food home, but he felt like he didn't need a job because he was getting the stuff free. Well, that's laziness. That means that's a choice you make. But sometimes, yeah, people do have a hard time, but it shouldn't be like that all the time. As we grew up, you know, slavery, a lot of people had to do certain things. Pick cotton. I pick cotton. But praise God, I don't have to pick cotton anymore. A lot of, but I didn't work for nobody else to do it. My grandfather had his own cotton field. And so, yeah, some people can do better, but some of us just choose not to. Uh, Act 316. Ah, 12 o'clock. I'm going to stop on this verse. And it is through putting trust, see, trust in God, and also trust in me, rightly dividing words. And it is through putting trust in his name, because some people believe on the name of God, but they don't believe on the name of the Son of God. It is, And it is through putting trust in his name that his name has given strength 
So when we read the chapter, they was glorifying Yahshua. It was not that they had done some marvelous work. They was using the right name because the power in the name. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, meaning shall be delivered. That's why the Bible says there's no other name under. Some people say in, but it's under. There's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved, but by the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. So we are to put trust in his name. That's a commandment from God that we believe on the name of his son and keep his commandment. That is a commandment from God that we believe on the name of his son. Some of us do not. Let me finish that verse. And it is through putting trust in his name that his name have given strength to this man whom you see and know. Yes, it is the trust that comes through Yahshua, which has given him this perfect healing in the presence of you all. Perfect, complete healing. And so when we put trust in him, it gives us strength. Just think if a person say, I can't be healed. I'm sick. I'm going to die. Well, that's not going to make them strong. It's going to make them weak. And they just may be taken out when they don't need to be taken out. You say, what are you saying? Well, we can just look at the woman with the 12 issues of blood. She had been bleeding all her life and she couldn't stop bleeding. But what did she say? Her faith arose. She said, I, not him. She said, I just touch the hem of his garment. And we keep saying we don't need to do anything. We don't have to. We're free. But we do need to do something. If I, that means action. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. So what did Yahshua say? Her faith has made her whole. So when things try to attack my body, I hold on to my faith. I don't give up on it. When things try to take me out, I call upon the name of the Lord. Because he never said nothing would happen. He never said I would not get sick. But hallelujah, what he did say, I'll take sickness away from you and I'll place it on your enemy. Always say, Lord, I'm not going to tell you where to put it. Just take it away from me. So you want to tell him to put it on your enemy because you dig a hole. You just may be the one that falls in the hole. So we, we what? We pray for our enemies. Hallelujah. I believe the word of God. So if the Lord's will, we will continue with the study next week. Thank you for joining me. I pray the word of God was a blessing. If the word of God was a blessing to you, you are free to share the word of God. It's only take a few minutes. It does not take a lot of time. And I thank those out there who do share the message sometime. Because many times people listen, they may come in on the beginning, they're gone a few minutes later. Or they may come in on the middle, they're gone a few minutes later. And that's kind of like if you read a verse in the Bible, and you did not read before, you did not read after, you can misinterpret the whole verse. So that's why I study, show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Learn how to divide words when you see if and but and. Those are small words, but they are really powerful and they can help us understand when we see and something else is coming i'm not finished yet but many times we just run on when we read we do not study the bible didn't say read and show yourself approved you can read and come out with any kind of revelation it's a study how do we study the same way i'm using different information from different chapters that's how we study we put it together and it become clearer and clearer and clearer. That's why he said, get wisdom, get knowledge. Above all, get understanding. But when it comes to the Rosh HaKosh, God the Father, 
Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, many of us have bad understanding. And guess what? They'll put you out of the church because they think you're wrong. And they are right. Well, remember, Yeshua already warned us in John 16. They will put you out of the synagogue because they do not know me nor my father. So he already told me they would do it. So if someone does it, I shouldn't be surprised. If they do it to you, you should not be surprised because he wants us to know what's going to happen because they, it happened to him. If we are followers of him, it will happen to us as well. Hallelujah. Once again, just in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith if we believe on God and believe that God raised Yeshua from the dead the same way Abraham believed God. It was counted credit to his account for righteousness, but he had to put work with his faith before he was made perfect. That's why the Bible says, work out your own deliverance, work out your own salvation. So you're only justified by your faith. And then later on, you justify by the words you speak. So justification gets you adopted out of the world into a race, into the family of God. And now there are many things required of us. The Bible says, if you confess me before men, I will also confess you before my Father in heaven. But if you deny me before men, I will also deny you before my Father in heaven and his holy angel. So we are to confess who Yeshua is. And Simon Peter said, thou art the Messiah, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. So Yeshua can confess us. So that's why when you go to Romans 10 and 9, if, very powerful, small words, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe, that means something different now, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, Yeshua Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart, because this is what's tried, but out of the heart man believeth, he continues to, until righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. To Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Adonai, shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth, he that continues to believe, and is baptized, shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. In other words, if a person does not continue to believe, they're going to be damned. They're going to miss it. The Bible teaches us that. Then you go to 1 John 1 and 9, and we confess our sins. He faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13. He that confesses, continuation. He that confesses and forsake, repent from his sin, shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not from his sin, will not prosper. Well, that's common sense. If you do this, this will be done. But if you do not, how can it be done? It can't. And so we are to go through these steps, especially, why do I go through them every time I come here? Because new people may be coming on. People may think they're in Christ and they are not. Uh, people may be in Christ, but they are not following what they are required to do. In other words, they are doing what someone else say, don't do. You don't need to do anything. You're free. Well, if you do not work, the Bible says you should not eat. So that tells you you need to do something. Whosoever call, that tell you you need to call. Uh, if you repent, they tell you, you you need to repent. So we need to stop listening to lying spirit and listen to the truth because it's the truth of God that make us free from the attack of our enemy. I should say enemies because there are more than one. Satan and his little imp. Satan can be in people. They are bad spirit. So that's why you try the spirit by the spirit. See the spirit is of God. Hallelujah. So just in case someone can come on or on now that has not confessed your sure, even if you do not believe, speak. Because you're justified by the words you speak. Someone may say, if I speak and I don't believe it, I'm lying. 
Well, God spoke first and things came to be. So that's why we keep speaking until there's no doubt in our spirit. So I confess with my mouth, the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that God has raised Yeshua, his son, Jesus, from the dead. And out from my heart, I am to continue to believe unto righteousness. And I'm to confess that which I believe. I am to agree with the word of God. Whatever the word says, I'm to agree. And I'm to rightly divide the word of truth. Thank you, Father, for Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, O oh God, for him being in my life. Thank you, Father, when I agree with you that sin is sin. His blood doesn't cover my sins, but his blood washes away my sins. They are there. They cannot even be found. He casts them as far as the east is from the west, never to return again unless I go out there and do it again. So, God, I thank you for your mercy because your mercy endures throughout all generation. But some people are using your mercies for an excuse. I thank you for your grace because your grace is sufficient for every need. God, I thank you for your grace that give us space to repent. As you gave Jezebel grace to repent, but she repented not. So God, help us to study your word, that we would use your word as a weapon against our adversary. Never against people, but against spirits that are in people. Because Yeshua said, every word that my heavenly father did not plant shall be rooted up. So God, thank you for using me to help root up that seed that your son never planted. So God, I thank you for your truth and continue to reveal truth to me because I do not teach. I just allow your spirit through me to teach your people as those disciples taught through the spirit, as Yeshua taught your word through your spirit. So God, thank you for that mind because your word said, let that mind be in you. That's also in Yeshua the Messiah. And we know Yeshua the Messiah had the mind of his father that he could say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he said, those that do the will of his father or his sisters and his brothers and his mother. So God help me not to do my own will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. I give you glory, I give you praise, and I give you honor. And I honor your son according to your word. He that honoreth the father should honor the son. And he that dishonoreth the son is dishonoring the father as well. So, Father, I give you both honor as your word require me to do. In the name of Yeshua, I give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining me. I pray the blessing of the Lord be upon you. Have a safe holiday. Be safe if you're traveling. Be safe. I give God angels charge over you to protect you and you're going out and you're coming in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.